G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Again, we're still in isolation <laughs> and I'm still playing around with waves. Um, I did one a little while ago that was black um, and the wave we're looking at very much from the side. This one we're looking from more in front and I've changed the light. So we're going to play around with how the light affects the water, the shape of the waves and all of the colours that go along with that. So uh, with starting waves and things, I always kind of like a, a framework, for example, something to start with. And I've got roughly the shape of the wave here, but probably one of the most important things in this picture is this bit of sky here, because it's going to reflect on the surface of the water down here, but it's also going to have an impact on the colours that are in the wave. So the very first thing I'm going to do is represent this somewhere where it's important down in the water. And that theoretically should give me some structure to spread out from. So I'm just going to tilt this picture up because it's easy to do this when it's like here. And the last picture I did, the water was pretty smooth, but I'm going to actually bump it up a little bit, make it a bit messier. It's quite a dry brush and it's just cadmium yellow medium and white. Now you'll, this will be the bottom of the wave, but I'm not bringing the light to the bottom of the wave because there'll be a shadow cast in front of the wave. I'm just going to pan that out like that. Now when I do workshops, one of the things that I say is if you want to flatten water, reflect the sky and it shouldn't be too hard to see how the water is now starting to get flat because the sky is being reflected like that roughly. So while I've got this colour out, I'm going to go around and put it in all of the places that are important. And of course that would be across the top of this wave like that. And that would actually do this a little bit. Not that that's so important now, but it's not a bad idea to put it in so we can see where we're going and oops across the top of that wave there because that's in shadow so this is where it's going to get freaky I'm just going to put some flash a really bright color across the back here and probably it's going to look wrong at first but I have to make a decision at this stage whether I want this water to be clean crystal clear or whether or not I want it to be slightly murky I'm going towards the clean sort of look so I've got to get some light through the back of this so it looks like the waves transparent and there's light shining through the back of it. So this color is phthalo green mixed with a little bit of phthalo blue and a tiny bit of dioxazine purple <laughs> and some cad yellow medium. So I'm just going to keep playing with that backlight thing and I've mixed up this lovely lime kind of green here and I'm just doing that. Now this part of the wave is going to come over and I'm going to cheat because there will be a sense of that being transparent there with that color going through the middle so I'm just going to do that and that will make sense later on so trust me. I'm just going to put the lip coming down like that. I'm going to make it quite dark but, and that will make more sense later on. Like that. And I'm also just going to just drag that across there like that. But I will a bit later on put a little bit of red over that because this is close to the light source. So everything closer to the light source is going to be warm and it'll get cooler as it goes out like that. Now I've got a little bit of this color on my brush, very thin, and I'm just going to run that across the bottom of the wave like that and up here a little bit like that. So this is all still, you know, roughing in. So I'm not too stressed about too much. I might just drag a bit across here and there just to kind of you know, increase the contrast a bit. So I'm just going to put a bit of this color in here 
and that is this color is kind of we're looking through the sun is coming through the back of the wave through underneath the wave and shining back on the inside of the underside of the tube <laughs> that's hard to get your head around just trust me <laughs> okay that goes there like that and that will make more sense a little bit later on i've mixed up a sort of a bluey gray color because as the wave comes down here like this the white the spray that's going to come off it will be in shadow okay so everything that's down behind the front of this wave like that will be in shadow and so it will have that kind of blue gray kind of look to it now we tend to think that um, the spray coming off the back of the wave because it's water is transparent but the truth is it will actually stop light so it will appear quite dark so anywhere where the wave is sort of flatter it's going to reflect the sky so here is going to reflect the sky here here is going to reflect the sky here but this area in here is probably going to reflect a bit of sky up here that's why we can make it blue and get away with it because water is highly reflective whatever happens in the sky or in the light behind is going to be shown up in the water somewhere so i usually will find whatever color i've got if i'm reflecting it here it might show up on the highlights of some of the other waves all these ripples or so it's really important to look for where the reflections go you'll be surprised just how far they'll travel i mentioned before that these uh, the spray is going to cast a shadow so we can actually come back in here quite dark look at that and it doesn't look out of place because it's going to be stopping some light now I've actually made that quite red believe it or not a bit strong there I've made it quite red because There'll be some red sort of shining through that and i'm actually going to bump up that red across there too because this is the light source the reds will be close to the light source here and the cooler colors will be out this way a little bit because i'm very impatient and i love this effect i'm just going to get in here now with this and just bump that up a bit bam look at that i love that bit sort of see through the through the back of the wave and see all that light. I love surfing at sunset when I've got that going on. So I've got a lot of this orangey reddy color up here in the sky. Can't not put it in the water. So I'm just going to put this here and I'll start defining some of those little ripples here and there in the foreground. So again i want to reflect the sky so anywhere where i think one of those wavelets will be or ripples will be i'll put it reflect the sky on the top edge like that and that will also come up there a little bit like that and i'm actually using see these um yellow lines i put here i'm using them as a sort of a guide and coming out from them to show me where the highlights will be and I'm just going to reflect some sky up there and maybe a little bit down there and what I've done is I've got some of this orange and they'll radiate out from the center here so I'm just going to actually I'm just going to do this here and I'm just putting this color on the front edges of all of those ripples because that's the part that's flattest relative to my eye so that's the part that's going to show up on the on the reflections okay, I've mixed up some white and cadmium yellow light this is going to be quite intense through here now and you can see that yellow is quite dominant and it's kind of pushing all everything else back
I know, I can get down here, I think. Yeah, there we go. And I'll just, a little bit across here, on the top there. It's a, one of the hard things about water, but also one of the lovely things about it. There's always that little unexpected, you know, reflection somewhere, just from that high bit that catches the light, or a little bump in the water, or... like a kaleidoscope. Now I mentioned before about some highlights on the top while I've got that colour. Put that in there like that. I won't put it there because it's a shadow. But anywhere here. And that won't come all the way down because that'll be in shadow. So I'll just bring that down to about there like that. Okay, I've added more white to that and I'm just going to really intensely here and there just do little shorter strokes like that just to get those little bits of chop on the surface of the water they kind of get lost when you're doing the bigger strokes but when you start getting into the detail you can just use the tip like that and do really short strokes. Um, I've just made some pure white like that and I'm just going to again here and there very strategically break that up a bit like that. It's quite a liney picture <laughs> so that hopefully should break some of that up and I'll just get up there. There's probably only three things I'm going to do to this um, to finish it. Um, again, I'm going to use an unexpected colour. Um, I'm going to mix up some of this sky colour, this th uh, French ultramarine with a little bit of thalo blue, and I'm just going to whack that in here to flatten that part out there and I'll probably bump this up up a little bit more. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll get some of this orange here and I'll just put it through here in the center of that picture just to, these are a bit strong. So this is a light source. We consider the reflection on the surface of the water to be a light source. So that would still have the warm to cool process happening. So this to me is too cool and too strong. So I'm gonna warm that up and create that lovely heat radiating out from that reflection in the surface of the water. See that? That's... I don't know why I did that. So I've had another look at this colour and there's not a lot of um, thalo blue in it. It's mainly French ultramarine so we'll crack on. Just want to get that and all those bits that are going to be reflecting the sky like that. Here. A lot of times paintings don't work because people haven't put any detail in the shadows and the shadows are kind of dead so you've got to bump up those shadows like that and even though you know out here there's a lot of this yellow color the blue's still going to be reflected there still be you know facets of the wave that are pointing towards the sky and, or that part of the sky so there'll be little flashes of that blue in there as well. Oops. Okay, so I've just mixed up a bit of that orange there and I'm just going to waft that in through there. I'm not sure why <laughs> wafting is the right word but hey we'll run with it and you can see that that's kind of warmed up that area that's there like that. And it's kind of made those shadows in there less offensive <laughs> unlike my jokes so I'm just going to bump up this part of the lip here now and sometimes it's really hard to work out what color to make it but because we've got predominantly orange through here and we've got that lovely blue in the sky and it's shaded so it's not going to be getting this direct light on top of it I just kind of mix this orange and this blue together and that makes this sort of lovely blue gray and I just like that 
I'm sure there's some science why that colour kind of works, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I do go into a bit more detail um, about the mechanics of waves and things on uh, in a DVD we call Wave Fundamentals. And there's also another DVD we do that's called uh, uh, More on Water. And it sort of speaks a little bit about what light does when it hits water and how it affects it and things like that. So anyway, there's plenty of useful information there. Um, in this image, we've looked again at the shapes of waves. We've looked at this more sort of from 45 degrees. Um, we did one before with the black background and we were looking more side on. Um, and this one has um, sort of begins to understand what happens to light when it hits the surface of the water, the shapes of the waves, the colours, creating the illusion of transparency and, um, and that whole warm to cool stuff. So it's kind of, even though it's a, a simple image, it's super fun to paint and there's so much colour in there, you can really bam up the colour and, and really kind of play with it. <laughs>